Hi guys, myself Dr. Kumar Gaurav and today I will be talking about acute epiglottitis. So let's start with the anatomy. Well, here you can see this is epiglottis uh, uh, and this is a leaf-like yellow elastic cartilage forming the anterior wall of the laryngeal inlet. So here you can see this is the anterior wall and this is the epiglottis. So it is a leaf-like yellow elastic cartilage forming the anterior wall of the laryngeal inlet. This is the front of the throat and this is the back. So attached to the body of the hyoid bone by the hyoepiglottic ligament which divides it into suprahyoid and the infrahyoid epiglottis. So here you can see that it is attached to the hyoid bone by a hyoepiglottic ligament. Then the stalk like process of the epiglottis to the hyoid angle. Well, the anterior surface of the epiglottis is separated from the thyrohyoid membrane. So, you can see this is the thyrohyoid membrane. This is the thyroid cartilage, this is the hyoid bone, and this is the thyrohyoid membrane. So, the anterior surface of the epiglottis is separated from the thyrohyoid membrane and the upper part of the thyroid cartilage by a potential space filled with fat preepiglottic space. So the space can be uh, invaded by uh, in carcinoma of the supraglottic larynx or the base of the tongue. Now here you can see Now here this is your epiglottis. This is airy epiglottic folds. First come your cuneiform tubercle, then comes your corniculate tubercle cuneiform tubercle cornicate this is the corniculate tubercle and this is your cuneiform and what are these this is the airy epiglottic fold so the supraglottic structures include the epiglottis the epiglottis these are the supraglottic structures the epiglottis the airy epiglottic fold and altenoids these C structures are superglottic structures. Now what is acute epiglottitis? Well, it is also called as a supraglottic laryngitis. You know the supraglottic structures I told you before. These are epiglottis, the airy epiglottic fold and the arytenoids. So these are the supraglottic structures. So it is also called supraglottic laryngitis. What is the definition? Well, it is an acute inflammatory condition confined to supraglottic structures like the epiglottis, every epiglottic fold and arytenoids. There is a marked edema of these structures which may obstruct the airway. So what is the etiology? Well, the classically described as a haemophilus influenzae type B bacteria infection of the epiglottis in children. In adults, only 20% of the epiglottis is caused by the haemophilus influenza. So it is haemophilus influenza type B is the most common cause in children about 20 percent caused in adults by the haemophilus influenza well other causes which lead to epiglottitis are the bacteroids and this is the whole list which you can learn this klebsiella mycobacterium tuberculosis this so staph aureus pneumococci viridens viruses candida and aspergillus well, what are the symptoms? Well, the symptoms pain during swallowing. So there is a odinophagia. There is an inability to swallow secretions. There is a sore throat, muffled voice, hot potato voice is classical sign is seen in epiglottitis, hoarseness, cough, dyspnea. These are all seen the symptoms of the epiglottitis. Well, what are the sign? The sign includes a fever greater than 37.2 degree, the tachycardia, heartbeat greater than 100 beats per minute, pharyngitis, swelling of the epiglottis, the cervical lymph nodes, lymphadenopathy, the swelling of the supraglottic tissue, inspiratory stridor. What is the classical? Whenever the patient inspires, there is a strider. drooling inability to handle the secretions so, so all these things are seen in epiglottitis so what are the examination well depressing the tongue with a tongue depressor may show the red and swollen epiglottis 
If you do the indirect laryngoscopy, may show edema and congestion of the supraglottic structures. This examination is avoided for the fear of precipitating complete obstruction. Better done in the OT with the facilities for intubations are available. Then what we will order? Investigation. These are the lateral soft tissue x-ray of the neck. May show swollen epiglottis which is also called thumb sign. Well, you can also go for CT and MRI, helpful to evaluate the complications of the disorder, which include the spread of the infection and abscess formation. Well, thickening of the epiglottis, obliteration of the pre-epiglottic fat and thickening of the subcutaneous tissues and muscles are common radiological finding in the epiglottic abscess. So here you can see this is a lateral airway x-ray showing normal anatomy. Notice the water thin, wafer thin epiglottis. So here you can see this is a wafer thin epiglottis which can you appreciate it. Well here you can see this is a thumb shape epiglottis. This is thumb shape. So this is also called thumb sign. A lateral soft tissue radiograph of the neck shows the thumb sign arrow. Here it shows this thumb sign. This radiographic sign is a manifestation of an enlarged and edematous epiglottis. And it suggests a diagnosis of acute infectious epiglottitis. Now here you can see this view of the nasopharyngoscope or you can say video laryngoscopy. In this view of the larynx obtained with the nasopharyngoscope, the larynx is shown with breathing. Well the left image the cord is abducted. Now this is the left image. You can see these are the cords which are abducted with phonation. So this wide arrow head mark in the left shows the airy epiglottic fold. So these are airy epiglottic folds. The asterisk, so this this is called the interarytenoid notch. Well here you well, previously I told you what are these called. First one is cuneiform, the second one is corniculate cartilages. This is the right posterior cartilages. So the normal orientation of the nasophrangoscope is to have the epiglottis anteriorly. So this should be anterior if you do the uh, video laryngoscopy. But this is direct laryngoscopy. That's why this picture is flipped. The image is flipped to match the perspective with a direct laryngoscope. So the small black notch on the bottom of the perimeter uh, of the image is a part of the scope eyepiece. Well, it, uh, it lets the operator determine the orientation of the scope and endoscopic camera on the eyepiece. Now here what you, what you can see the epiglottic tubercle. What is this? This is epiglottic tubercle. These are the false cords. So well, let's talk about the differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis of the adult epiglottitis includes the infectious process like the mononucleosis, diphtheria, pertussis, croup tonsillitis, lutsic angina with the retropharyngeal, peripharyngeal and the peritonsillar abscesses, the tracheobronchitis, the subglottic laryngitis. Well, the non-infectious diseases like the allergic reactions, angioneurotic edema, the foreign body aspiration, reflex laryngospasm, the laryngeal trauma, tumors, hydrocarbon respiration, systemic lupus erythematosus, and inhalation of the toxic fumes or superheated steam. These may cause come under differential diagnosis. Well, what are the complications? In some cases, an ear, uh, an infection can spread from the epiglottis to the nearby parts of the body, including the inner ear, causing the otitis media, brain causing meningitis, heart lining causing the pericarditis, and lungs causing the pneumonia. So what is the treatment? Hospitalization, danger for the respiratory obstruction. So what will we start? We'll start the antibiotic ampicillin, or we can start a third generation cephalosporin, which are effective against the hemophilus influenza. Well, given by the parenteral route by intramuscular or intravenous, we can start with the steroids like hydrocortisone and dexamethasone, which can be given intramuscular or intravenous. Well, there should be adequate hydration and humidification and oxygenation. Intubation and trachomastim may be required if there is a respiratory obstruction. Now here you can see this, uh, uh, the management of the epiglottis, how it goes. See, now if there is a sus uh, suspicious clinical presentation, we will do the flexible fiber optic laryngoscopy, which concerns the diagnosis, start the antibiotic and consider steroids as 
told previously. Well, now the patient uh, has a respiratory distress. Okay, then uh, just see if no, then monitor in the ENT department. If it's stable, then continue the medical treatment. The patient improved. Okay, then yes, discharge on the antibiotics for 10 days. Okay, now continue the medical treatment. Patient does not improve, then consider infectious complications and other diagnosis. Now the respiratory distress is present, then consider an urgent intubation or tracheostomy in the OT. So intubated monitor in the ICU with the extubation, until extubation. If the patient improves, again, yes, discharge on oral antibiotics for 10 days. Well, not intubated, close monitor until resolution, yes, discharge. So this is the pattern, how we follow the management of the epiglottitis. So what are the prognosis? The prognosis in adults with acute epiglottitis is good and appropriate and timely treatment. Well, the most patient can be extubated within uh, several days. However, the unrecognized epiglottitis may uh, rapidly lead to the airway compromise and resultant death. So in spite of the acute epiglottitis generally having a good pre uh, prognosis, the risk of death for the persons is high due to sudden airway obstruction and difficulty intubating patients with extensive swelling of the supraglottic structures. Well, the reported cases do include a sudden fatal cardiac respiratory arrest occurring in patients without previous evidence of the respiratory obstructions while in an intensive care unit settings. Emphasis, emphasis uh, the importance of the providing the close monitoring and adequate airway protection in these patients. The adult mortality rate is around 7%. Okay, thank you guys and keep showing love and do subscribe and like my videos. Thank you.